Please. Thank you. So I forget to introduce myself. I am uh, Lilith Farsian, a PhD student of um, Russian Armenian University. And um, my main study are concerned with uh, uh, magnetic nanoparticles synthesis and uh, property investigation. And also our today's presentation is uh, related to comparative analysis of chemical and biogenic ferron 3 or 4 nanoparticles and understanding their biocompatibility and toxicity. So um, during the last decades, uh, there were lots of changes in the health industry and if we have the uh, cardiovascular diseases as the main cause of death uh, in um, most of countries today the situation is changed and the most um, deaths uh, according to the who report are caused by the antimicrobial uh, resistant infections and in the second place is the cancer diseases. Uh, the modern uh, technologies and the modern drugs that we have are not able to, um, to fight against uh, this question. So that's why our wide investigation cycle is continuously developing for finding uh, new approaches for uh, elimination or maybe treatment and diagnosis method for uh, these diseases. And one of these uh, approaches is the nanobiotechnology, which is related for getting um, the new methods for uh, diagnosing and uh, treatment methodologies or so-called terranostics uh, in these disciplines. And mainly it's investigating the uh, green uh, biotechnology methods, which we'll have, uh, which we will see in our um, slides. So, um, in, because the um, drugs uh, that are mainly used in cancer uh, treatment are um, have a great toxicity on uh, different org uh, in, on different systems, uh, that's why uh, we are trying to find, uh, like not we, but the scientists from all over the world are trying to find the uh, new approaches that can um, uh, that can improve. The, um, treatment methods and also we know that one of the most important things can be reached by the uh, bio nanotechnology field and uh, of course there are several different uh, to uh, different drugs it's a uh, low therapeutic uh, and um, also, uh, I was talking about uh, our offers uh, regarding the target delivery, prevention of uh, drug resistance progress, and achieving a therapeutic result in a shorter period. And all is this combined in the nanoparticles approach that we can use. Uh, so, what is the green biosynthesis approach? Uh, it's the usage of um, fungi, plants, yeast, and uh, other uh, preliminary products uh, with the combination of different um, metal salts. So, in this case, we use the iron salts mixture for achieving the nanoparticles of um, with controllable uh, with controllable behavior and with um, a low toxic uh, effects. So why uh, the green biosynthesis approach is uh, so effective? Because it's uh, eco-friendly. Uh, it doesn't need some uh, special. Also, the green, as I said, it's um, eco-friendly approach and one of the main uh, reasons why it's preferable um, in comparison with chemical and physical methods of synthesis is the coating that we uh, are having with the use of green method. Um, unfortunately, during the chemical or physical uh, synthesis are used uh, some uh, substances that can prevent the oxidation of the um, 
uh, nanoparticles, which uh, very uh, usually um, they have some toxic um, effects uh, on different uh, models. But by using the plants as our source, uh, the coating uh, which is formed on, on the shell of the particles is uh, eco-friendly, so it doesn't uh, have any toxic effects as we can see in our results. That's why this is the main um, approach why we prefer to use the green biotechnology methods. So uh, let's proceed to the results that we have. Uh, we have the preliminary study of different endemic plants that have a uh, high anti-radical activity. Uh, this is important for carrying the synthesis. And one of the most prominent um, candidates for this synthesis were the um, basil uh, leaves. And we uh, investigated both the dry and the fresh leaves and find out that they are perfect candidates for carrying the green synthesis. You can see the, uh, our results. Uh, this is the process of achieving the green particles and this is the uh, stem image that indicates that we have uh, the uh, nanoparticles that depend to uh, ferron 304 cluster. And uh, we have tested this, nano, uh, and yeah, uh, this is the um, chemical synthesis also uh, which we carried out and um, uh, on the right part, you can see the uh, transmission microscopy image that indicates that uh, they are nano-sized and also depend to the ferrum 304 cluster and uh, have the core shell structure. So uh, nanoparticle size distribution varies for chemical and uh, biological ones. We have the size distribution from 2 to 70 nanometers uh, with most pronounced 11 nanometers size for biogenic and from 3 to 22 for chemical nanoparticles. Uh, for investigation of the toxicity of nanoparticles were carried out different tests. First of all, the nanoparticles were tested against the growth of um, gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria. Uh, for Staphylococcus aureus, we have um, uh, the, uh, these results. Uh, we have that uh, none of the nanoparticles that were investigated, that were uh, particles um, synthesized using the basil extracts like aquose and uh, ethanolic extracts and none of them um, showed any antibacterial ag activity against um, our strain uh, besides the fact that this stabilizer which is 96 percent ethanolic extract of um, uh, basil or osimum basilicum uh, showed an um, antibacterial properties against uh, staphylococcus aureus and we don't have any antibacterial effect against um, Escherichia coli strain, nor for the uh, extracts and nor for the particles. So then uh, we had tested the growth of um, E. coli bacteria as a function of nanoparticles concentration. Different concentration were investigated starting from 50 micromoles to 150 micromoles of maximum dosage. And um, our investigation showed that uh, there are no any effects on the prolongation of the uh, log phase or uh, any other phase of uh, or the exponential growth of the bacteria. And what was interesting when we compared the same concentrations for chemical and biogenic synthesized nanoparticles, they uh, repeat the behavior and show the same uh, growth curve in the same concentration. So you, you can see that we have the 150 micromoles of concentration on equal during 24 hours. It just shown the first six hours. City against uh, human erythrocyte, and the results uh, reveal that uh, properties against the erythrocyte resistance. 100% both for chemical and biogenic nanoparticles. And uh, here are not shown the results. 
but these tests also were, were carried for the uh, cause cultures on the model of uh, linium austriacum and we also don't see any pronounced cytotoxic effects on those. So from the above uh, given results, we can conclude that both the chemical and biogenic nanoparticles are non-toxic uh, for uh, gram-positive and gram-negative bacterial strains. They are non-toxic for erythrocyte, and uh, they don't show any toxic properties also for callus cultures. And as I mentioned uh, in the beginning of our presentation, uh, now we are testing on the um, different cell cultures, the uh, cytotoxicity properties. So uh, in the last few years, uh, we have uh, numerous developed numerous methods for um, green synthesis uh, with working with various uh, metal salts and uh, also were developed the methods for nanoparticle stabilization. Uh, we have uh, several collaborations, uh, both for the local laboratories and uh, for foreign laboratories, and we are open to any collaborations, uh, so we will be happy to collaborate with a um, like wide range of laboratories. And uh, also, this is uh, our laboratory staff. The head is uh, Professor Hovannisian and um, PhD students and students which are involved in this research project. And also, uh, this is our recent publication list. And uh, we are working on there much more, just a small screenshot. And I will be happy to answer any of your questions if there are so. Thank you. Thank you very much for your very interesting presentation.